Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing my out-of-box review for the HGUC Marasai Unicorn version. So we got another HGUC kit here from the Unicorn series, so that means it's good and I love it. But uh, this kit is based on the much older original Marasai kit, so that means that it sucks, right? But no, that really doesn't mean anything at all, that just means that uh, it's just not going to have as nice for engineering as it would have if it were actually made in 2009 when this kit was released. Uh, but the original Marasai was years before that, I think, if I remember correctly, 2005, I think I said, right, in the unboxing? So, yeah, this kit does have a little bit limited articulation, it does have a little bit more seam lines than you would ideally like. I mean, I think anything is more than you would ideally like, but, yeah, it's got the kind of normal stuff that you would expect for a little bit older high grade, but all in all, it still is pretty cool if you can't get the Master Grade version. The Master Grade version of this was a P Bandai kit, so yeah, I guess that I don't know if that's been reissued any time recently. I don't, I haven't seen that been reissued for a while or ever. I don't know, but I'm sure it's probably been reissued at one time. I do have the Master Grade version. I have that P Bandai kit, and I should build that sometime and review that for you guys. But in the meantime. Let's take a look at the HG. I, like I said, despite its age, I think it is still pretty nice, so let's check it out. Right, so as far as the stickers go, this kit is really quite minimal. It's really only just stickers for the cameras. So if you see like in there in the head, there's a black sticker which kind of goes over that part and then you have the green sticker for the mono eye that you stick on top of that. And you actually have two choices for the mono eye sticker. You can see one is a perfect circle and one is a little bit larger and it's flat on the top. So that one is kind of supposed to go there. You're supposed to choose between the two. So like if you wanted to have the eye, for example, like looking off to the side, you can use that smaller or you could use either one, but you just stick one of the stickers uh, wherever you want it to on there. That doesn't move, unfortunately. That's part of so you can't actually move the mono eye at all. You'd have to just move the sticker or you'd have to scratch build that. Uh, but anyway, you can see we do also have another black sticker on there. That was for going like down inside the head there, like in front of the black one there. So it didn't really fit in there very well, so I tried to put it on and then I was like, no, it's just silly and it's uh, not really necessary at all. It's barely going to be visible at all, so I just kind of did without that one. The other rectangular green sticker is here on the back like that so that's pretty much it for the stickers so that's pretty nice the head articulation will go up to there that's really about it down to there love this super long antenna on this that commander horn on that one and that did have a, a little safety nub on that i did just go ahead and sand that down just for the sake of the review this can rotate a little bit in the waist, not a whole lot, but it's not bad, I think. In terms of like forward and back, side to side movement, nothing, just rotation, that's all. The arms will move back and forth. You can see that moves forward to there. This one is a little bit hindered from going back very far just because of this shoulder, uh, the armor. But you can see on this side that will go back a little bit farther than the other side. But then, yeah, nice and far forward to there. Up, you can move that arm all the way up before the armor is gonna be starting to hit on the head. And then the same thing goes for this side. But yeah, because of that shoulder armor, really only gonna be able to bring the arm up to there, which is pretty disappointing. I think you could very easily modify this a bit to change that shoulder armor so it could, I guess, get out of the way more. But uh, yeah, that seems to be about the maximum that's gonna go. Otherwise, the arm works pretty normally. Rotation there at the top. We have a single joint in the elbow giving us just a little bit more than 90 degrees. But I really like all this. I don't really know how to describe that color. It's like a pinkish orange kind of color. It's a really unique color there for the piping, but it does definitely help to break up that green space and it's a really nice accent color. I like that quite a bit. Uh, in the wrist, this is a ball joint. We have, a, of course, a seam line here, a seam line here on the top, seam line there on the backpack, seam line here on the thighs, seam line here, just a little tiny one there. You can see there's like this panel line which kind of like wraps around there very interestingly. I'd, I wouldn't really count that as a seam line. I think you're kind of just meant to just leave that there like that, but just in that little tiny bit there, there is a little bit of a seam you should get rid of. Going back to the front here, I just want to point out the hands while we're on it. This are two of the three hands you get. You do get a third hand, which is just a trigger finger hand, which we'll use for the weapons. But otherwise, these are the only hands you get. So you see on this side, it's just like this kind of half open one. It can be... It, it seems like kind of disappointing. Like it seems like that wouldn't really be an ideal hand for just your only left hand that you get. But it's actually quite versatile. I think it looks pretty, uh, pretty fine in just like a resting position. But it also works well to hold the weapons. So it kind of I think actually works out not bad. On the other side, it's just the kind of more standard regular type of holding hand that we're used to, and that one also just kind of looks fine. 
But again, I think a, little, a couple more hand options for this kit would have been nice. The front skirts do move together. I suppose you probably could separate them, but I think, if I remember correctly from putting this together, uh, there was not actually anything to hold them in there if you cut them apart, so you'd have to modify those a little bit. The side skirts will also move up to about there, so nice and far. The back skirts also move jointly together. Some nice detail here on the backpack with all the little thrusters around in there. The legs are just on ball joints, but they can spread apart to there and just rotate only so much. So you can see this can only rotate out to the side, only really to about there, not too much. But you can bring the leg up to there, so nice and far. There goes the backpack, interestingly. The knee also only going to give you about 90 degrees, but about what you would expect, I think. These little flaps here look like they should move a little bit more, and I kind of wish they did, but unfortunately they don't. Those are just kind of stuck there. They seem like they're a little bit too close, but that's just how those are. And then down here in the ankles, the ankles are going to move side to side just a little bit, because moving it out that way, it's kind of blocked hitting that part there. But you can move it in for about as wide of a stance as you're going to get from this. Uh, underneath the feet, though, we've got some nice de full detail there. No hollow spaces. Foot articulation down, only to about there, up to there, not a whole lot of range. But again, I think overall the articulation is decent. Oh, I forgot to talk about the shoulder uh, shield on this side. That will rotate and then the two halves of the shield can move individually like so. Underneath we got the beam saber handles there. So yeah, the articulation is not too bad. It's about what, you, you, what you'd expect for a kit of its age. For the beam sabers, we do have two clear yellow beam saber effect parts, so those can be used with those, or those can also be used with this. This is the Fedayeen rifle. This is used by a couple other mobile suits that were uh, from this same era, but uh, basically what we can do is we can also use the beam saber effect in here, like that, and this can be a beam saber sword weapon. Alternatively, this can use, be used as a rifle with this end here being the rifle, and it's got this little dangly bit there, so you just have to close the hand up around that part there. When not in use, there's nowhere to really put this onto the kit, but I feel like it would not be very hard to maybe, uh, if you have magnets or something, just drill into this section here. It's a nice big enough section, you could just drill into there, put in a magnet, and then you could like attach another magnet like onto the shield or something. I don't know how you would maybe do that. It doesn't seem like it would really fit up underneath the back skirt very well. But uh, you could sort it out if that's something you're interested in doing. You do also have the just standard Marasai machine gun rifle. I really don't like this rifle at all. It's Like I said in the unboxing, I find it terribly ugly. Mostly to do with this just really weird looking ammo clip there. You can't take that off, <laughs> there, obviously. It does have the secondary handle here sticking off to the side. Uh, it looks sort of better without that. And I think maybe if you were to just modify it a bit more, that could be something. So I won't use that for it all for this kit, so I'll just kind of toss that in my spare parts pile and maybe use that, modify that, and use it for something else later. Then we have the Umihebi, or the Sea Serpent weapon, and this is, it's in pretty much all the wrong colors. I guess, I mean, it's it's mostly right, but that center part there is supposed to be gray, and then it's supposed to have some red around here for like the little, these little thrusters on it, and then the tip is supposed to be red. But anyway, and then we do also have the wire for that, so you can pull that off, stick the wire here in that end, the other end of the wire into there, and then you've got your little wire umihebi. So that's pretty cool, actually. Once again, for a comparison, here is the Zaku 2 F2. The Mars has obviously definitely got some bulk on the F2, but it's really not too much taller, just a little bit taller. The Zaku 2 F2 also has a much smaller head than other versions of the Zaku, so you kind of have to consider that other versions of the head uh, would probably be a little bit larger in general, but. Anyway, it's uh, not a terribly large mobile suit, but definitely has some bulk to it. Alright, so unfortunately, as I expected, that open hand for the left hand, although I think it does look pretty passable in most, I mean, for most uses, it does unfortunately not work very well. Uh, you really have to do a little bit of a balancing act for it to be able to hold this accessory. The other hand, for the right, I mean, holds things pretty well, but even that one, it's not really holding the beam saber handle all that well. Um, so, one thing I would maybe recommend doing is just maybe getting that set, the Jigen uh, build, build that round hand option set would probably work very well. The uh, cover, the hand covers won't match, but I think you could probably swap them, just do a little bit of modification, just throw these hand covers onto those hands, then those would probably work a lot well, a lot better for holding this stuff. 
Also, this kit doesn't have any sort of action base connector or hole in the up underneath the skirt to plug this onto an action base, so I'm just using the kind of like fork shaped one just to kind of hold that there uh, under the skirt. It does seem to be working pretty well. This, is even, this isn't even the uh, Bandai action base, but it seems to be working pretty well. The Bandai one I'm sure would work just as well, if not better. So, Of course, the easy solution for that would just be to just take your drill, just drill a hole up through that skirt up through the uh, kind of center of the waist part there and then you can plug that onto just a regular peg action, action base. So aside from the flaws that I already mentioned, just the fact that it does have some seam lines, it does have uh, some poor points of articulation. Otherwise I think the kit is, I'll, I mean, the side, there's really not all that much work involved with that. I mean the seam lines that it does have are pretty simple ones, they're pretty common, easy, simple seam lines to get rid of. The articulation I think could, if you really wanted to improve the articulation, there's a couple of points that you could make some really easy modifications to that to improve some of those articulation points. But I think as you can see it can do a pretty wide variety of poses without too much trouble so I really don't think the articulation is all that bad as long as it's, it's able to pull off some cool poses. I mean, it obviously, it always could be even more dynamic, but I mean, just depends on how really crazy you want to get with it. One thing I will say is that I think the color separation is all pretty good. I mean, it's not all molded in the correct colors, but I mean, just the separation of parts, it would be pretty easy to uh, color some parts that maybe aren't in the right color. Like for example, the inside of the shield, it's a separate part, so you can very easily paint that in gray like it's supposed to be and like the thrusters in like the side of the leg there and like the side of the base of the leg very easily uh, paint that part in gray or whatever however you want to do it to match the, the rest of the frame and things like that so uh, stuff is separated pretty well so painting this kit should be uh, relatively easy and pretty fun actually I'm really looking forward to painting this kit so overall I gotta say I think this makes another pretty great addition to the HG Unicorn line even though this kit is not originally from that line I think it was adapted pretty well. Like I said, I think the only really, my only really biggest problem with this kit is just the hands. Holding that, uh, that rifle, kind of the way that you're supposed to, you're supposed to hold it by that kind of smaller handle up closer towards the edge, but there's just no way that that's going to work in that hand. That, that handle is just too small and the hand is just too wide open. They've got it photographed like that in the manual, but I'm pretty sure that's fake. There's something holding it up, but like behind is some, Bandai trick photography going on in that photo because there's just no way but you could just use a little bit of sticky tack in there or like I said I think the best bet would just be to just swap those hands if the backs of the hands like the hand covers really matter to you if the, for those to be correct I think just changing those out I think would be probably your best bet so anyway if you guys do have any other questions or comments leave those down below this kit is pretty nice definitely check it out if you're into the design if you really want to see the master grade kit yeah I'll try to get to that eventually but uh probably will be a while till I'm able to get that reviewed for you guys. I am really excited to just try out the Master Grade Marasai as well. I've heard it's a really great Master Grade kit, so I mean whether it be the standard version or the unicorn version, whatever. So I'll have to build that pretty soon for you guys. In the meantime, thank you always, as always, for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye! Thanks for watching! See you next time!